All right. <clears throat> hey, everybody. Welcome to the Clickstoff Patreon exclusive class for June 2019. This is recorded on June 23rd, 2019. This is your host, Daniel Powell. And today we are going to cover um, July 2019 meta. Uh, competitive play. Retirement happens here in just a few days um, and there's going to be a big shift in the meta. So for this month's class I wanted to go over um, a couple things that are retiring and a couple of things that I think become better and for certain reasons um, and kind of talk about what I would call the the gatekeeper builds kind of the builds that you need to make sure that you're prepped for or even that you can just play because the build is still really good um, so let's uh, let's talk about that today um, first of all um, let's talk about uh, Vulture um, Vulture won US Nats along with Hawkeye um, so maybe not quite in the iteration that we had talked about on previous month's videos, um, but still uh, just playing both elements together uh, between Hawkeye and Vulture uh, that were both just really good elements, um, you know, help Pat secure his victory. Um, so <clears throat> there's a uh, there's a couple things I want to talk about with Vulture. Um, and maybe not so much even on the map as it is uh, this month. It's um, on the board, or I'm sorry, just team building and theory building. Because um, I really think Vulture uh, loses quite a bit uh, with the Joker gas retiring. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, that, that plus one, plus one attack and damage really helped him out quite a bit. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, it's, so you have to almost, uh, look at, um, different ways to augment that. So, you know, I think our core is still probably Al Jordan and, um, Vulture, just in my opinion. Um, you know, you still need the octopus arms. Uh, you're still going to need, I believe, Mr. Oz. Um, you know, and then you just got to find out different ways to get that perplex back. Um, there's a couple different ways, you know, if, 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 whether it's Al Jordan, whether it's Mr. Oz. Um, you know, that's 190 points there, and you still need a leadership, uh, potentially. Um, you know, I still like Prez Rickard for that 18 defend. Um, I also like Groot. Um, let me just pull some of these up as I'm talking about them, right? Um, the 18 Defend is still going to be good um, whenever you need to Barrier. Uh, and against that Professor X tank drop situation, um, since, you know, since Hawkeye's gone, I believe the X Swarm and Blackbird becomes even more viable. Right, we talked about in our anti Hawkeye video uh, how Blackbird was still viable, um, you know, with a couple of tweaks to the current build. Um, so, you know, it was viable pre retirement. I think it's viable even post retirement, even more. Um, so, <clears throat> it's, it's how do you defend against that and, you know, being able to barrier and get the um, big defense against the Professor X tank drop is, is going to be key. Um, so that's why that would be my vote for Prez. Obviously we know all about Groot. Um, you know he's been a mainstay since he was released. Um, and then you know the new one that everyone's talking about uh, that I'm still on the fence is is the Colonel Poison. Um, and for the purposes of this video, um, you know, I don't think there's a definitive recommendation here. 
um, as much as it is there's two options to think about um, with shredders retiring uh, having dual rollouts with shape change and super senses is still just good um, before uh, with shredders you wanted shape change super senses and invincible typically um, because if not the shredders would just shred you without having to do any real effort um, as far as rolling dice is concerned um, so Vulture with losing the gas and just having a quick easy way to get that battle fury um, you know he has to be able to augment that in one of two ways um, you know the battle fury can be getting around by Colonel Poison um, when Colonel Poison uses, you know, the uh, free choose an adjacent friendly character, this character can use Battle Fury into their next turn. And Colonel Poison has leadership um, and stealth. So both of those things are pretty great. Um, Colonel Poison also pushes to that perplex. Now that still leaves out, um, you know, Super Senses and a reroll of Super Senses from potentially like uh, the Wakanda map. Um, you know, uh, on some of the Ultra Chase team, the the Captain Marvel Ultra Chase teams, you know, you'll see that Wakanda map bonus played. Um, so I think you can also make a case for Phil Coulson um, in some of those situations because Phil pushes to perplex. You can pick up a light object out in front of your starting area. Uh, he can KO that and give and give these characters, you know, give Vulture a precision strike depending on what you think you're going to be facing more of um, and it's really hard to say, right because the, you know, the second biggest the biggest piece that made an impact there in the top 8 was Kobik uh, who has the dual rollouts um, so maybe in the situation whenever you have the flurry um, you're able to hit that super senses twice so I think probably Colonel Poison is a little bit better um, my issue is that you don't get the um, the 18 defend with Colonel Poison and Colonel Poison um, can't remove the tokens from Vulture like Prez Rickard can and you know maybe that's not such a big deal in general but so if we take this down we take Prez off you know you're at 230 points um, with the goal in mind that you're gonna have to get the movement value all the way up maxed out in my opinion um, so you've got Everett Ross uh, which we've talked about in some of the Patreon chats, um, you know, and then you still got the big Tony, um, you know, he is still just a solid, solid perplex piece, um, you know, I think he will be to the day he retires, um, so in that situation, you've got big Tony's, um, you know, that puts you at 290 points, which is probably fine, um, you know, I think you're still going to need barrier. Um, now you can call that out with poison uh, with uh, Colonel Poison. Um, you know, I think if we were to just take a page out of like um, Patrick's um, playbook, you know, I wouldn't be um, now. I typically would not recommend unseen. Um, because see in this situation if we go to this you're maxing out your movement plus three and then you only have your um, attack up plus two um, but you have the additional prob from unseen um, so that's a you know that's his 80 points between unseen and big Tony uh, it gives you a little bit more room for a uh, retaliator or something along those lines um, you know, and you get the outwit, um, but Al Jordan 
is still able to pick all those powers and get the attack up. Uh, so, you know, if Everett and Big Tony go plus two, plus three to movement, you get your plus three to attack here. Um, so you're rocking that 14 and you're rocking that up movement. Uh, there may be situations, um, you know, which we've talked about a little bit with just picking up a heavy and just doing the six straight through with Vulture. Um, but in general, I think that this becomes the all-in sort of Vulture build um, right here and right here starting in July. Now, there's a lot of things where you know, when this video is released to the public, you know, at the end of July, beginning of August, you know, we'll have Star Trek and Batman or X Men the animated series coming out. Um, you know, so there's a lot you can't really predict in those situations. Uh, but this is, you know, my solid advice for the month of July. Um, and I think you just really just round that round this team out with the three. Um, you know, solid IDs, Rusty, Gene, and Cyclops. So that, you know, that's that's going to be your three solid team here for Vulture. Um, you know, you get the Reach, you get the Ock Arms, you get the Battle Fury. Uh, you're just going to have to hope they miss out on senses. Um... Now, I mean, if you have the actions and you have the reach turn two, um, and let's go over here to the map. Um, and this is, you know, we've just got a play area open up here. You know, if you have a situation where you can get the actions to TK out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and Vulture goes to here, and you can reach. Uh, without needing the additional um, carries um, or the additional carry from like a retaliator to get out Oz um, you know you can TK he's going to be doing the flurry Al Jordan can go giant uh, carry up Mr. Oz um, you probably do have the actions to take Colonel Poison and push to that second click so that you can get the damage up as well. Um, you know, so if your first turn likely looks like um, TK the Ock Arms back, Barrier, put it to uh, TK him back, equip, Barrier with Al Jordan doing his perplexes, and then putting a token on Colonel Poison. Um, and then turn two. You're likely going to be TKing with or pushing Colonel Poison, giving it Battle Fury, or giving Vulture Battle Fury. Um, TKing with Oz. Uh, you can actually move up with Al Jordan now since you're not busting, busting the Joker gas. So go Giant, do Perplexes. You can do the Probs. Um, and then Al Jordan with your third action can move up. Um, you know, you just got to be careful with with losing that leadership. So that's where it comes into play of, you know, if you've got something up here to where you can TK push Flurry um, as opposed to needing that fourth action, uh, that's, that's what you've got to be careful with. Um, and so that's kind of the, the compromise that comes into play with Colonel Poison that I want to convey. So you know that's kind of my uh, that's my that's my summary on Vulture. I think Vulture is going to be still really good. It's just not as over the top good as it was with the Joker gas potential. It's a little bit more finesse type situation um, than I think it was before. So let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about my main man, Unimine, next. Um, actually, you know what? 
correction. Let's talk about let's talk about Kobik. Uh, so Kobik falls into this category of the dual rollouts being very good, um, and we saw Kobik played with Trader, um, and then Kobik has the uh, bearer of an Infinity Gem trait. So you're talking about 165 points, um, 165 points for those two, um, and someone like uh, Paris had played um, double traders. Um, so this is this is something that, as going through the set. Um, you know, I think you actually, for someone like myself, will need two sets of the uh, Infinity Stones. Uh, and that's for typical play. Um, since the Infinity Gems don't go on your sideline, in this situation with double traders that can take on any of the uh, Infinity Gems, um, I think you're going to need to need two sets of them. Um, now, you're probably going to ask which ones can you probably get away with only having one of. Um, I'm going to say it's probably the Soul Gem and the Mind Gem. Um, you know, the Soul Gem, you're not really going to be stealing energy much with the Traders um, or with Kobik even. Um, and then the um, they actually don't have it on realms yet. That's funny. Uh, the mind gem has the mind control and the plus one uh, defense, I believe. Now the ones that you will really need two of uh, come into play with the space gem. Uh, the traders typically have those space gems so that they can phase carry Kobik and trader. You can go out. Uh, space gem makes that an eight. So you go out six, you sidestep, you go out two more with your trader, with the other trader. Um, or you can even swap it out to Kobik, uh, trade it around to uh, Kobik, and go out um, ten squares, and then do sidestep, sidesteps, um, to go that little bit further, um, and start that lockdown combination. Um, so the lockdown combination is... Uh, the Cosmic Cube, uh, choose one. Uh, this one is given an action token to an adjacent opposing character. If you can't, deal in one penetrating damage. Um, so what the trick is, is Kobik activates that, swaps it to Trader, Trader activates it. Uh, trader swaps it to Trader, then Trader activates it. So it, it's, it's really the death of the OMA. Um, which is something I'm pretty excited about. So along with Trader being able to... Um, I'm sorry, Kobik able to swap the um, team abilities. Um, and then you can outwit the Power Cosmic or Quintessent folks. Um, you're also able to just keep an OMA locked out of the game. Um, you know, this is this is really why you need a balanced team. Um, and they also ruled at uh, Origins that um, the lockdown gets past first turn immunity. Um, so if we're talking about our Vulture team, uh, you've got enough characters on that team that if they come swinging across that map turn one, you got to make sure in that matchup that Vulture is completely body blocked. Um, from turn one, not turn one when you get to start from your initial setup on turn one. Um, so that becomes a situation where you need to make sure you have a heavy object out here. Um, you need to make sure um, you're pretty much ready to go turn one because if they come all the way across the map, um, you know, I think I think the situation really comes in is that Vulture just can beat Trader um, even without 
equipping if you can get past, say, Kobix rollouts. Um, because if uh, Vulture goes straight after Kobix with a heavy, right, so you'll be, uh, you know, a 14 attack, you pick up a heavy and a perplex into there, um, well, you might be a 13 attack, um, you know, you pick up a heavy, you go 6 damage with the Battle Fury, so if Kobix misses the rollouts, you go swing, you go pick up another heavy, um, you smash that onto a traitor, they take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, um, and then your ID cards and Al Jordan can finish up this traitor, finish up the other traitor, um, I'd say with relative ease. Um, but that's the that's the Kobic traitor traitor trick. Um, that's still, I think it's still really good. Um, and it's something to worry about. And even if you take off the triple, the double trader trick, you just go Kobic Trader, you still have a lot of room for some good stuff, right? Um, you know, you know, you just pick that, uh, fancy keyword that they have called Cosmic. Um, and this build gives you a lot of room for a lot of different cool stuff as, you know, as we're all aware of, um, you know, you can stick a collector on there. Um, you can stick, I don't know, pretty much anything on there that's worth it. Um, Pip can help them get a little bit further even. Um, you know, he's got a 13 movement. Um, then he can carry both of them. It's, um, you know, he's a little bit squishy. Typically... Uh, but it can also give get rid of the need to have the um, to get rid of the need to have that extra space gem, and you can start out trader with something like maybe the the power gem or something along those lines. Um, sorry, my uh, throat's a little dry this morning, so I'm trying to stay hydrated while doing the video. So, you know, and then we're familiar with some of this other stuff, you know, we've talked about that at length, um, you know, the best pupper in the world, Lockjaw, you know, Kobic Trader, all sorts of just, Kobic Trader plus good stuff makes a good team, but you've got to have that collection of gems, and you've got to have the collection of other things. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is just pairing Kobic Trader. Uh, this was something that um, I played against Azra Strife um, in Nationals with the uh, Astronomer on the team. Um, and he is a rare. Um, I'm sure he may not even be on here yet. That's fun. Thanks again, Realms. Um, yeah, see, he's not on here. Yeah, Voyager, Possessor. Um, so let's talk about... Um, they don't even have Collector. That's He's an Elders? Oh, they got a misspelling on him. That's fun. Um, so... <clears throat> we want to talk about Astronomer. So let me pull up the uh, thread and talk about Astronomer. And I want to talk about some of the maps that I saw played with Astronomer as well. Um, let me get that pulled up. Uh, Black Panther and the Illuminati... Give all this second to load up with all of the videos and unboxings. Just one second. 
All right. So Astronomer, he has the improved targeting hindering, and he can start with any of the Infinity Gems. Uh, this is typically why you probably want a couple of Power Gems to give him plus one damage, RCE, and Close Combat Expert. Uh, his TK Power, I didn't really see it come into play a whole lot, um, but being able to go out six or go out eight twice, um, because they played Astronomer and Mr. Oz on that team. So that put it at uh, 80 and 40, maybe? Um, I want to believe that's what it was. Oz. Yeah, and then so uh, Astronomer puts it at 285, and then they added IDs. So that, that allows you to go out with that team. Go out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then Trader can go sidestep one, two, three, four, five, six. Or if you're just carrying the one, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, with Kobik having the Space Gem, and then you're in the starting area for your lockdown situation. Um, so, that, and it gives you a full map reach with the Astronomer and the Oz together. So, all of this leads me to kind of a... Uh, I don't know, an inevitable truth, maybe? Something like that? Um, or a conclusion that I've had. A lot of these things fall under... It dies to a 6 damage shot from Muni Mind. So, kind of the purpose of what I want to convey on today's video uh, comes down to... Lack of retaliators from Vulture being good. You know, if you play the Recal Swarm, especially one that's not themed, Vulture will eat that team alive. Um, and then, on the other hand, that allows an opening for our good friend Uni to be able to freely attack. So, it comes into a situation with these gatekeeper type builds to where is your team able to withstand a vulture attack, a Kobic Trader lockdown, and a six damage penetrating psychic blast uni mine shot. Um, so, in, in all of these situations, the Unimine team, um, I think, is able to best handle that. I mean, Uni's been one of those um, pieces that's been good since he started, right? Uh, we're all aware of that. Um, so it comes into the, the Uni team can withstand the six damage shot from an opposing. Uh, opposing uni team it can withstand the charge flurry or still the octopus arms of a um, of an uh, of a vulture team and it also has the uh, backwards offense or the outward the output to be able to deal six damage side blast to an astronomer to deal six damage side blast to a traitor um, or Kobic, right? Kobic just needs to fail the rollouts, which Uni has dual targets, right? So he can put a um, a target on Kobic and a target on Trader, um, and then whoever misses their rollouts, um, you know, they get damn it, they get hit to six damage. But in these situations. Like with the Kobic Trader Astronomer team with Oz, 
you know, it didn't have a good um, a good matchup versus the Vulture and the Hawkeye. And I still don't think it has a great matchup versus Vulture. Um, you know, because if it moves across the map, then Vulture's ready to go. Um so that that's kind of really the my issue with some of the with the elders and this is what I'd found out during Nats uh was that you know collector is just he's a 6 damage psi blast away right cyclops you know they can call it the uncommon cyclops um you know or if they're on your side of the map they can call it the super rare um so there's there's all these really good cyclops that can shoot a 6 damage psi blast at you um so that's that's always something that you have to be concerned about um, with these. So Cyclops has it, Jean Grey can get it, uh, Chase Jean Grey, uh, Uni. Um, so it comes into if they win map, are they able to go to things like the new Great Mound map? Um, the other one was the Metal Arena map uh, that the finals was played on, you know, Astronomer. With, a, with that improved targeting elevated, it can make it really hard to get shots off. Um, but even in these situations, you've got to, you know, you've got to where unless they can get to like the top of this mountain, you know, you're still able to take Uni, TK him up to say here, one, two, three, four, and then he can go one, two three four five let's see if we, even if he goes tk to here one two three four five one two three four five so he can you know pick running shot go 13 for six and then single target or side blast one of the astronomers off of the elevator or you know off this world basically um and then you're still able to get the prob up there from um, you know, either carrying up Lockjaw, potentially, or, um, you know, calling out uh, a Jean Grey. Because uh, if Uni is um, here, you call out Jean Grey with Lockjaw, she can free TK him. Um, one, two, I'm sorry. Um, you, she can power TK, one, two, three, up to there. You can get another Perplex on the attack or something like that. Uh, you know, it, it comes to be a risk where you might have to go without a prob. Um, just depends on your time that you have to set up initially. Um, it all comes down to that. Um, but getting Uni to, like, say, this square, um, one, two, three, four, five, he has full range of this. And it's even better if they go down to one of these other elevations. Um, now, typically... Uni's going to be able to withstand those huge range combat experts from Astronomer um, if you need to creep some. Um, so that, that's all dependent like on this Great Mound or this Metal Arena map. Now the Metal Arena map has even huge, uh, bigger swaths, right? Because two can shoot all the way through here, right? And then one you have this full range and then even three you have a fairly wide swath um, to whereas the great mound has these more broken up areas of elevated which makes it a little bit harder uh, to shoot from so you know we've put the uni kind of the ideal uni mine team uni mine lockjaw mudman groot uh, Remaker Ring, um, Super uh, Super Rare Wolverine on the Headmaster ID, Gene Cyclops Chamber. Um, I think that's just a, a very solid team. Um, it comes down to one of those situations to where you have to be patient with the team. You know, you have to be patient playing Uni Mind. I can't, uh, I can't really preach that enough. Uh, you have to take your shots. Um, and, you know, that's when a lot of feedback I get is that, you know, people don't get patient. Um, but the one reprieve I would say is that if you don't have, um, 
that you don't have retaliators, you know, especially something like a Surtur um, or a Mangog, right? Th those are going to be your two big ones. Um, and if you don't have those uh, opposing you, you know, Uni can typically withstand a Groot. Um, Uni can typically withstand a Carnage. Um, Carnage is annoying because he's got plasticity, but um, with the Mandarin Ring, Uni's going to be able to poison off the little symbiote pogs um, and then be able to shoot Carnage once they come over. Um, again, it's not ideal, um, but it's doable. Um, you know, so without Surtur and Mangog, um, you're able to pretty much attack pretty freely with Uni. And then on the teams with no retail, um, you know, Uni should just be going to town, uh, taking his massive um, psychic blast shots on the opposing team. Um, so I guess if there was a summary for that, I, I'm pretty excited for the Uni, uh, Uni Lockjaw the next um, month. Um, and it might be all the way up until Worlds. It just depends on what X-Men the Animated Series, what Star Trek TNG, and what the rest of Regenesis looks like. Um, but those things won't be legal until uh, later this month. Um, or later in July, I should say. Um, when most of the WKOs have already happened. Uh, and of course, some of the WKOs are happening pre-retirement um, on the 29th of June so let's um, let's talk a little bit more about maps um, you know we talked about the Great Mound we talked about the Metal Arena those are the two big ones that have made a splash um, I also think something like Necropolis is a really good map as it uh, has the blocking, it has the lines of fire, it goes from indoor to outdoor. Um, but if your opponent chooses the indoor side of the map and hides their colossals here, that makes it hard for, say, Uni. Um, you know, there's a lot of good rock maps coming out. Um, you know, whenever this new map becomes legal, uh, I want to get it loaded up and. Um, you get to see my uh, Facebook stuff if I can get the Clickstoff map loaded or the Clickstoff page loaded As you can see, we got a thousand likes on our page. We're pretty excited about that. Um, and we appreciate all of you guys on the Patreon um, helping us out with the channel. Um, so there's this new uh, rock Bible map, um, which is actually just fairly ridiculous. Um, I think it becomes one of the more playable maps right out of the gate. But I think there's also a trap. Um, you know, if your opponent is grounded and you play a terrain and place the terrain here, that's going to be really good. But it also uh, takes away these big lines of fire from Uni being able to shoot across the map. Um, I think that's always important. That's one of the things why I dislike the Wakanda Earth X map for Uni after doing some play testing. The reroll of Super Senses is nice, but there's just too many lines of fire as you go through here that get blocked by this blocking and these elevated. Um, you know, being able to park right there is just frustrating um, to be able to take multiple shots on when you get someone that just starts to run from you um, in a matchup. Um, so the more wide open the map, the more Uni's going to like that. But I think there will be some teams that when this map becomes legal in a few weeks um, that are definitely able to take advantage of placing a terrain, say a Doom Buggy, or even the Wonder Woman jet uh, here 
on this map. Um, so, you know, more to come on that one. Um, maybe that helps make Trader um, and Astronomer and those guys a little bit more effective. Uh, but really, it comes down to at that point, uh, this helps Uni be able to creep up um, and go from there. So, <clears throat> this leads me to one other point while I'm thinking about it. Um, you know, I particularly like a muck time with uni, um, you know, one of the better maps. Uh, so if you face the, uh, Kobic Sheriff Strange, gonna switch your TAs to Mystics and Mangogu, um, you know, you want to keep in mind, keep an eye out for the Cyclops that ignores hindering, um, but if they don't have that, being able to park uni here in stealth is going to be able to keep them from shooting you and pulling off the Mangog trick. And either side of the map has that because it's a pretty much symmetrical map. Um, so, uh, Cersei, Thanos Prime, Makari, or Star Fox. Um, I think on the, co on the collector build, I like Star Fox. And I believe on the Lockjaw build, I like Makari a bit more. Um, it's six in one hand. I don't know, it's one with six in one hand, half dozen in the other uh, type situation. So it uh, it really depends on how you want to play the team and um, what what's going to be your your take on the team um, and if you don't have a Star Fox Macari is just fine um, you know plasticity is still a thing um, but you don't have that mini shredder uh, walking woods getting in your face super quick now um, that'll tie you down with the multiple plasticities um, so phasing may not be such a big deal um, and especially with like Joker's Wild Green Lantern going down, um, it's one of those things that I, I just can't predict whether you'll need phasing or hypersonic. Um, that's just going to come out to be how kind of this first couple of weeks of the new meta comes out to play. So, but definitely if you don't have a Star Fox, I'd recommend getting one. Um, but Makari can be fine. Um, I think Thanos Prime and Cersei are really the two that come into play the most. Um, and Thanos Prime, you know, is the running shot that's going to pair with that Psychic Blast. Um, he has Invincible, but picking Invincible is not going to be that big of a deal uh, with Shredders retiring. Um, it can it can be a big deal with the Rusty call in being able to pick. Invincible before the beginning of turn um, fire marker goes off and um, but Cersei uh, I like Cersei Cersei has TK you might think you know that's weird to have uni TK but he's grabbing someone from 10 to 13 squares away and TKing them back um, not all of the way obviously six squares um, but also Cersei has shape change and Cersei has barrier um, so between Unimind and Lockjaw um, you can double barrier in so if you play the underground cavern or any of the um, say if you're playing in a rock event you can do the arcade um, you can cycle between barriers on a OMA uh, you know if you pick barrier with uni then pick barrier with lockjaw um, to see if lockjaw can go back to back turns um, and then you're going to be able to say lock in a full point uni mind or a full point black panther and they're going to have to take turns to either phase away um, or just clear in which case you just have the ability to take shots with uni mind on that full point OMA um, and, and knock them down piece by piece. Um, so th that's really the combination I like for sure. Uh, then obviously both of them have stealth. Um, now if you take 
Thanos Prime over, say, Thena. Um, if you do get popped on Uni, and this is kind of one of the things I've talked about a little bit, if you do get popped with Uni, um, Thanos Prime is just an incredibly powerful um, on his last click. Um, you know, he's got the exploit, he's got the super strength. Um, he can get into a much more powerful piece if he starts KOing folks, uh, but those stats are just something that is unmistakable whenever it comes out. Um, Cersei is also great. She pops out without wit. She also has that two free squares of barrier. Um, I had a game against Michael Love um, at Nats, which I ended up ultimately losing. Um, I was able to, it was on the prison map, um, prison 42, yep, and so he had his clone shredder down here at 24, um, I was popped, um, I had my eternals here, uh, I ended up here, I ended up having my Thanos Prime crit miss after Star Fox had propped the roll. Um, but if he had not crit missed, I would have been able to move Cersei over to here, put Barrier there and there, and Clone Shredder had already been hit. Um, so I was up on point. So even during after a pop, that game was winnable uh, had I not rolled a crit miss um, in that situation. So, sometimes things happen, um, but Cersei having that two free squares of barrier is going to be invaluable, I think, in some of these map combinations, uh, should you get popped. Because um, you can survive, it's just, I don't think you can play big Thanos, as he's a giant target outdoors, and he really just can't protect himself as well as he needs to. Um... So sidestep for uni is just something you're going to have to play around uh, without having. Um, and use TK, I think, more than anything um, to navigate between Lockjaw and your Jean Grey call-in. So other than that, um, I think that pretty much wraps up what I have. Um, and the big thing being that Shredder and Hawkeye retiring uh, opens up quite a bit, but it also narrows the focus, uh, I think for me, that uh, uni is going to be extremely good going forward, um, you know, as he always has been, I think. I've always been able to play really well with him and, and tout the benefits of playing uni, so um, if y'all have any questions on the video, please feel free to give me a shout, and as always, thanks for supporting our Patreon, and um, for everyone else that's watching this later in July, thanks for supporting the channel. Please like and subscribe. We'll talk to you all next time.